All right, hello everyone. It's been a while since I posted a video. Um, I didn't want to wear my neck collar support on video because, not because I'm vain, just because I didn't want you to think I was trying to be a bleeding heart and get all your sympathies. Uh, just mentioning it because, uh, uh, you know, we all, we, we all have missions in life. Uh, and we all have obstacles <laughs> and uh my obstacle lately has been health um so anyway i just hope for your understanding when i'm not as consistent as as certainly i would like to be i would like to be talking to you at least once a week um and sometimes it's just not possible for me to do that so um i uh i hope and i ask for your understanding okay enough of that Namu myo horenge kyo. This video today, I have chanted about, meditated on, and I've been thinking about it for years. Um, I like my videos to be informative. I like them to be direct. Um, I firmly, uh, believe or know that when it comes to the Buddhist teaching, um, there is only one Shakyamuni Buddha who was instantiated as a human in, on this earth in order to prove and to show us that as humans on this earth, we can all attain to our or awaken to our innate Buddha nature, Buddha nature being that from which we are instantiated and manifested and that to which we will return when we're done with this human condition uh ob observation and perception our observation and perception is in totality the practice of the buddhist method to awaken to an eternity of which we are a part in each moment of our lives good friend of mine actually not buddhist uh said said it in his own way he said that he was living moment to moment but in each moment he was living for eternity i don't know in his mind what that means but he's using the same words is he not a moment is an eternity and eternity is a moment there's no difference we in the human condition perceive a linear length of time to this whole experience, but they're simply discrete moments one after another. Birth, rebirth, each moment a rebirth. I have ta tapes, videos that go at length about this, about the truth about what rebirth means, the truth about Reincarnation not be, having anything to do with Buddhism. Reincarnation has nothing to do with Buddhism. It is not the Buddhist method. It is not Buddhist thinking. I want to make that clear because the first thing I need to do is go back to what I talk about in other videos as well is study, 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 study. If we're so lazy in this modern age. We think that Googling something means that we're suddenly imbued with all the knowledge. We don't read anymore. And you can use Google and the Internet to get good information, to investigate and learn and teach yourselves. But we don't often do that, do we? This is the most critical thing, especially in this age, which I don't have to explain a great deal. Buddha described this age, this era of man, as an era ruled by greed, anger, and stupidity. I don't think I need to explain that. Witness, well, I don't want to get into politics. I know a lot of people may not be comfortable with this video. I expect reaction. I expect some people simply won't say anything because that will be their reaction. But 
what I want all of you to at least consider, at least do this for me. I've had people contest things that I've said on other websites, saying that, well, maybe that's because you're a different kind of Buddhist than I am, because I'm a this Buddhist or a that Buddhist, or a, uh, my favorite is the uh, Tibetan. Um, and let me tell you right now, and please, if you're a Tibetan Buddhist or you're a this or a that Buddhist, hear me out. Please, I plead with you, hear me out. There are lots of sects calling themselves Buddhist who are absolutely not. In fact, they may be the worst enemies of Buddhism. These are not just my words. Read Nichiren, a great Japanese Buddhist scholar who, in his day, his whole life was dedicated to the reform of polluted, un-Buddhist, Buddhist sects. And it's, and here's the thing, it's very easy, it's so ridiculously easy to read Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha's words and all of those esoteric, exoteric, folklorish, borrowed from other religions and other thoughts, crap just falls away. It just falls away. And what you need to know, Tibetans, is that Tibetan religion's been around a lot longer than the Dalai Lama. They have taken certain chunks of Buddhism and they profess to be Buddhist, but they are not Buddhist. They're far more Hindu than Buddhist. They have so much folklore, so much baloney attached to their belief system. This is why they're a religion. Buddhism isn't a religion. It's a method to awaken your mind to what is already here. You don't have to believe in anything. You experience it for yourself. That's how you know something's true. You know, we live in an age, I was just listening to uh, 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 DeGrasse Tyson, a uh, cosmologist, physicist, talking about how we've lost our democracy in the United States because we have all of these politicians and leaders, supposed leaders, telling people, the citizens, that science is just an opinion, that it doesn't mean anything, that evolution is just an idea. These people are poison. These people are destroying our great nation, along with the way that they batter down education. Well, how do you make believe people believe in, in, in nonsensical things? Well, the first thing you do is you don't teach them how to be smart. You don't teach them how to think for themselves. You don't think, you teach them how not to trust their own eyes, ears, and mind. When you do that, people believe in holy chickens. Because why not? Now, Buddhism is very much like that. It's very much a science because it is observable. And you can, re it's repetitious. And by that, I don't mean repeating your chant. What I mean is, when you try to do something with the Buddhist method, the result is always the same. And it grows on itself. This is how you know that the path works. Because you experience it. It's not an opinion. It's not something you're asked to believe in. She had a dream and then popped out a child. Joseph was pretty stupid. Come on. Unless he was in on it. I know I'm going to say stuff here in this video that's going to grate on people. Now, Nietzscheen, back in the 13th century, saw how his people were suffering from pestilence and famine and earthquakes and all this stuff. 
And ultimately, they kept getting invaded by China, by Korea, by Mongols. And he wrote a big, long letter to the shogunate. Now, I'm not just talking about the White House. I'm talking about the shogunate. These people are military rulers. They're samurai. So if you're going to get into one of their faces, you better feel really confident about what you're saying, right? He wrote a big, long treatise called the uh, Risho An Kokuron. It was a remonstration. By remonstration, I mean he wrote a letter and he was telling the government, stop screwing up. You're making huge mistakes. And these are not the kind of mistakes that you just erase and fix. They're the kind of mistakes that cause tremendous backlash. And the mistakes he was talking about was the official religious stance of the government. And wouldn't you know, their stance was Shinto or uh, Nembutsu. To this day, if you talk to a lot of, uh, of uh, martial arts monks, uh, and you watch movies, you'll see them going, they're chanting the name of Amida Buddha. That's hocus pocus. And, and very detailed in his remonstration, Nitrin showed them that if they continued to practice incorrectly the Buddha's teaching, the true teaching, the words of Shakyamuni, and deviated even a little from it, that they were inviting disaster. And it would end up with invasion of the country, and they may even lose the country itself. Sound familiar? This is the Tibetans' entire existence. So I took a copy of the uh, Risho and Kokuran, and I sent it to the 14th Dalai Lama. Stop teaching this stupidity of reincarnation when every word of Shakyamuni goes against it. There is no such thing. But see, it's comfortable. It's comfortable for the human mind to think magically. It's comfortable for the human mind to think that everything will be okay and we go to a nicer place. What the hell is wrong with this place? Why have you given up on it so quickly? This is the place. This is heaven and earth. This is hell and anxiety and everything. This, this moment. It doesn't exist some other magical place. You don't come back and try to sweep it a little bit better every time you're here. Come on. That's moment to moment. There is no reincarnation. You want to know? You want to know? Here's the problem. People join these groups, they go, now I'm a Buddhist, and they stop studying. Read. Read this. This is one of the earliest Mahayana texts when Buddha started to expand on his teachings. After years and years of teaching, he'd finally gotten his disciples to a point where they could understand what he was talking about a little deeper. This is how the Buddha taught his whole life. He started basic. And he gradually, over his 50 years of teaching, got more and uh, deeper and deeper into what he was trying to